to Russia now, where a second day of voting is underway in the country's presidential election. In most cases, the process has been uneventful so far, but there have been some instances of apparent protest, with voting stations reportedly set on fire, a Molotov cocktail thrown at a polling station, and dye poured into ballot boxes. Moscow is especially concerned about generating a show of support for Vladimir Putin. In the Russian-occupied regions of Ukraine, which are shaded on the map, Moscow hopes the election will appear to legitimize its rule there, and it's backed by a vigorous state media campaign. A son and dance to get more people to vote in the occupied Ukrainian territories, or as Russian state-owned media call them, the new regions. The coverage is part of Russia's portrayal of its presidential election. Hosts and officials say on TV that the newly acquired citizens are grateful to Russia for letting them vote. Our people arrived in Liberated Avdivka and talked to the locals, and they asked, what are your needs, first and foremost? Bread. There's a shortage of bread. Secondly, give us the opportunity to vote. On screen, they show views that casting a ballot has never been this easy. You don't even have to go to a polling station, as this journalist explains. Members of the election commissions walk from building to building with the ballot boxes. They sing songs cheerfully and loudly. People hear this come out and join the queues to cast their vote. By the official start of the election on Friday, most residents of the occupied Kherson and Donetsk regions had reportedly voted early. There is no doubt that Vladimir Putin will claim a landslide victory here. Many Ukrainians were forced to leave their homes, but new residents came. Civil servants loyal to the Kremlin were lured to work here with huge salaries. For more on this, let's bring in Fabian Burkhardt, political scientist and Russia expert from the Leibniz Institute for East and Southeast European Studies in Regensburg, Germany. Hello and welcome to the program, sir. First, tell us, does the Russian president have any support in the occupied Ukrainian regions? Well, first of all, it's uh, very hard to say because uh, the, the event that is currently taking place is uh, not election uh, proper. Uh, first of all, it's illegal, both according to international law and Ukrainian legislation, and it's even doubtful according to Russian legislation, because martial law is uh, at least upper, uh, operative in the in the four uh, recently annexed uh, territories. So they could be called sham elections at best. Uh, and even uh, Russia doesn't really know what the electorate is, so they have counted uh, the number of uh, uh, persons uh, pre uh, the full-scale invasion, so and due to massive population transfers, displaced persons, refugees, deportations to Russia, and even ethnic cleansing. So it's unclear even to, to the Russians how many people there. They have a, a number of tools available uh, to coerce people into into take uh, taking part into this uh, event, like workplace mobilization or or even coercion uh, okay. at some point. Okay, as you say, uh, Russia's war in Ukraine is still raging on. What impact is that having on the presidential election, you think? Well, I think the, the main outcome is already clear, meaning that um, uh, Vladimir Putin is going to stay on for, uh, for quite a number of years, meaning that, that, that for the Russian political regime, there is a long time, uh, long term horizon uh, for continue. Uh, with the war, and that that I think is the main uh, outcome, signaling uh, yeah. both to the international audience but also to Russians that uh, Russia is in into this war for uh, for as long as it takes. Mm. Earlier, we saw pictures of reported protests taking place at some polling stations. So it's not like there's no opposition to Putin. But I guess the question is: Are the voices of those who oppose President Putin being heard loud enough in this election? Um, certainly not. And um, these are not uh, fair and free elections. Uh, no opposition, real opposition candidates are allowed to campaign. In fact, we've seen a uh, murder of Alexei Navalny just uh, before uh, this event. Uh, so it's absolutely impossible to claim that there is uh, any any kind of competition uh, during um, 
during these these uh, the sham elections, and even in the occupied territories, the situation is even more fierce. Even systemic uh, opposition parties um, face much more pressure uh, from the Kremlin, from United Russia, than in in uh, in the internationally recognized Russian territories. Right, Fabian Berkat political analyst and Russia expert from the Leibniz Institute for East and Southeast European Studies. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.